Two Brewers Peated Release 25 versus their Special Cask Release Number 1, a Peated Single Cask Cask Strength Whiskey. How are these, and which one takes the cake? Stay tuned for the Whiskey Whistle. Greetings, my whiskey people. Annyeonghaseyo. Mark here on Whiskey Whistle in Seoul, South Korea, the center of Northeast Asia, bringing you a two-up of two brewers. I often do two-ups because it kind of saves a bit of time for me, and it also gives you more to consider with this video. So here I am. I am in my final quarantine, hopefully ever. Uh, fingers crossed, right? Uh, I've got my two jabs. I am, uh, uh, actually today is 14th day. I'm fully vaccinated, baby. Uh, anyway, so here we are. Unfortunately, Seoul, uh, I had to quarantine because, well, the 14th day hadn't passed. And also because their rules for, for, uh, for non-Koreans don't start until July. Uh, anyway, so let's get these poured. We got release 25 here. And I'll just read this quickly. Uh, peated release 25 two brewers offers peat laid bare dusty ash complexion a complexion iodine running running in its veins a flesh of smudgy embers self-indulgent and unapologetic great okay let's get that poured and uh, these samples come thanks to two brewers so a big thank you to everybody at uh, at Two Brewers Yukon uh, Yukon Spirits uh, and Yukon Brewing. Really appreciate that. And already, I'm getting wafts of um, medium peat, which is nice, and uh, classic bubblegummy, uh, slightly savory uh, notes are coming off of this uh, for. Uh, for the way it smells. Anyway, excellent. Uh, so that's release 25. It's 43% ABV. It's unchill filtered. It is natural in color, as all of Two Brewers Yukon whiskeys are. Now let's get the um, special cask release number one. Now I've got the sample from the distillery, and I also bought my own bottle. Okay, so let's get that poured. And I think this might be the farthest away a bottle of two brewers has gotten in the world possibly okay what a difference in color and um, this is quite heavily peated uh, so that's quite a difference between the two so of course I'll be starting with release 25 and uh, then I'll try release, tw uh, pardon me, the special cask release number one. Let's have a look at the color together, shall we? So quite a, quite a difference there. Basically a um, 24 karat gold, perhaps slightly darker, like an Indian gold, or uh, a, a, a tiny little bit of something uh, brassy, coppery working in there. And then the cask strength release is clearly uh, straight up a, a nice coppery hue, isn't it? Great. Or uh, darkly polished oak in that family of color. Excellent. And uh, we'll check out the legs. I'll do those both at the same time for you. I'll try anyway. Let's see. Can I do this? Oh, yes, I can. Good. That helps. Okay, spinny, spinny, spinny. Let's see what we get. I love looking at the legs because it tells you a little bit about the viscosity. Of course, viscosity is influenced by a number of factors, but uh, it should tell you something about what the mouth feel will be like. Let's turn those labels to the side. much slower with the uh, cask strength but the 43 percent release 25 isn't much slower quite nice legs nice legs i think the edge goes slightly to the cask strength version but uh, by no means uh, is release 25 a poor leg show no very nice 
Great. Okay, well, let's get into the nosing of release 25. Here we go. So I mentioned bubblegum and I mentioned peat. The peat is kind of Ben Romach style peat. Maybe even slightly more muted than that. Somewhere between Springbank and Ben Romach. It's, uh, it's a warm earthy peat. It's definitely burning embers as, uh, as the label had said. Not too much ash. And a little bit of um, hmm, like a little bit of pork barbecue, barbecue ribs, with a bit of sweet sauce, like a sweet sour sauce. A touch of meatiness. And I think this is where the peated works with two brewers combining together with the savory flavors that gives you this, this ham, uh, spare ribs type of, uh, of, of, of scent to it. But yeah, bubblegum, there's bubblegum in there. And I've been on this bazooka bubblegum kick lately, not for chewing, but just as a tasting note. Let me dial that down a little bit. Um, yeah, Bazooka Joe. All right, uh, what's the name of that bubble gum? Whatever it is, Double Bubble. Okay, on to the palate. Cheers. Quite a nice bit of sweetness. Again, we've got um, um, rib, uh, barbecue rib glaze. We have a bit of um, cinnamon infused honey. Bubblegum coming through there as well. Now the cask. I don't have cask information on this and I left that at home. So I'm sure we'll hear from, um, from maybe Dave Gardner. He'll let me know uh, the story with the, uh, the cask and I'll put that in a comment. But um, Predominantly ex bourbon, and I wonder it's got some nice spice to it. Is there a rye cask involved here? I'm curious. Now, they might have mentioned that if so, but you don't get the full information on uh, just that little tiny strip which goes on the front of, uh, of the bottle. We've got some um, like fizz candy, you know, the candy called fizz. On the palate, you don't notice the peat quite as much, but again, you're just getting this um, barbecue ribs type of a flavor. Uh, that tells you that you're, you've got at least some kind of smoke and peat happening there. This could also have a nice char on this barrel, giving it the nice juxtaposition of, of peat, smoke from peat and smoke from the char.
Though it's sweet, it's got a nice mid-palate dryness that really ramps up into the finish where you get the dryness, you get the uh, barbecue embers, you get some wafts of pine and a little bit of menthol. This is where I'm thinking we have some rye involved. I'm not sure though. The finish is medium to long, as I find all of the two brewers finishes are. A nice little bit of waxy sweetness trailing out at the end. Uh, again, some bubble gum, slightly strawberry flavor in there. Tasty. Oh, final taste here. Hmm. Good. Okay, let's add some water. I'm back to the spoon since I didn't bring my um, uh, my dropper with me. That was about eight or nine drops. Okay, we'll let that sit for a little while. Now I almost want to just finish up with number 25 first and then get into the special cask release number one because I don't want my, I don't want my, my pardon me, I don't want my, <laughs> I don't want my palate to be um, uh, neutralized, neutralized, numbed by the strong level of peat that I know is coming in, um, in this one. And by the way, this special cask release number one is a collaboration between Alberta Scotch Society Hey guys, and also Kensington Wine Market. Hey, uh, KWM Andrew, nice to see you. And uh, uh, great that they collaborated to put out something unique. There has been, uh, I think this is the third cask strength, third, fourth, maybe just the third cask strength release from Two Brewers so far. And uh, there's another one that's come out for another club in Alberta called the... Uh, Edmonton, what is it called now? Edmonton Scotch Club. Um, and that's a, a peated PX cask. So lots of peat coming uh, in these um, um, single cask, private cask releases, which is interesting. Excuse me. Okay, let's get back into that. You know, let me let that sit for one more minute, and I'll tell you what's coming in the next review. And uh, that is a, a, a brand that's gone through a big label change recently, and a change up of also its expressions. Um, so you might know which one I'm talking about here. This one is the Ben Riech. So Ben Riech, and this is the 10 year old triple distilled travel exclusive release. And I've done a little bit of homework. And I went a little bit crazy on it one night. Um, we'll talk about this. And what I want to talk about is um, what happens when a distillery diverges from their norm in a um, distinct, uh, non-superficial, a, a, a serious way. And how that affects, well, your perception of it and whether it's worth it or not for distilleries to be trying to uh, to put on different hats, or should they should should they just stick to their guns and uh, uh, do what they know best? So we'll talk about that in the next review. Okay, back into two brewers release twenty five with water now. It's tapered down on peat, obviously. I'm getting something reminding me a little bit of a uh, 15 year old uh, Glenn Fittick. But the nose is taking on a really nice, warm, cozy, sweet, savory uh, type of uh, stance. 
We still have the bubblegum there, but I'm getting a little bit more strawberry coaxing out here. Wonderful. Isn't it great to find strawberry in your whiskey? I think, for me anyway, fresh strawberry, um, strawberry jam, chocolate obviously, uh, something like, like barbecue spare ribs. These are all really, really excellent things to find uh, in, your, uh, in your whiskey. For the Koreans watching, this peat mixed with the savory and the sweetness here um, is something really like uh, uh, kun koguma, um, basically fire roasted Korean sweet potatoes. Uh, they have a purple, purplish skin, and what I mean is the pam kogumanigo hobak, the um, pumpkin style. They have two styles of uh, sweet potato here: uh, chestnut, which has a yellow flesh, and uh, then um, uh, pumpkin, which has an orange flesh. especially the charred pieces. And I think I've said this before, that's the best part. Don't take it off and throw it away. Eat that together and it really heightens the flavor. And I think it's more satisfying. So there's a trade-off. You cut off the charred bits and you eat more, or you leave the charred bits on and you eat less. And I think, uh, I think it's better for you just to eat less altogether, right? Okay, that's a big di divergence there. Hmm. <laughs> Beautiful crescendo of, of especially that that sweet strawberry note. The peat is still carrying on here. And as I said, the savory distillery character of two brewers is combining with the peat and really making it a very mouth coatingly waxy, enjoyable barbecue. It's a barbecue. It's a barbecue in my mouth. <laughs> hmm. really fantastic at first I thought hmm it's not peated enough but now I'm realizing you know what for this whiskey and this cask um, it's just right so that's fantastic even the 43% is excellent and uh, adding a, a touch of water really heightens things as well Age-wise, this is probably 8 up to 11 years old, uh, in and around there. Maybe not 11, 8 to 10 anyway. Um, so really good aging and um, really befitting of uh, um, not just buying because it's a new distillery, but buying it because you really enjoy the character of the whiskey. That's what happens in the beginning when these new distilleries start up. The initial releases are a little on the youthful side, maybe not exactly um, how the distiller hopes that, that it becomes, but it's a trade-off because they have to make some money too. And two brewers waited quite a while. I think they waited until uh, around about um, their sixth or seventh birthday, I think. Um, so they really did a good job with being patient. But they have their beer business to to uh, to keep the money rolling in, as well as their uh, other spirits, uh, like and liqueurs that uh, that that are also um, sell very well, both locally in the Yukon and also uh, in Edmonton and Western Canada, where it is essentially their main market. They have released in Quebec. Uh, I think they're thinking of Ontario soon. And I've heard talk about uh, USA and also maybe Europe at some point soon as well. Maybe South Korea someday. 
Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So uh, let's get on to the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Two Brewers Release 25. Oh, that's not it. <laughs> two Brewers Release 25. What is that going to be, folks? It's going to be 92 out of 100. You heard it. 92 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Two Brewers Release 25. Really well put together. It's Though it's youthful, it doesn't come across as such. And it's really well put together. Great cask. Really flawless here. Hence the high score of 92. I think that's almost tying with the highest score I've given for two brewers. So rest assured, if uh, if that is available for you, then uh, then go ahead and grab one. You've got my, uh, my blessing. Uh, keep in mind that these were gifts to me, to the channel. Hence, this is a, uh, a video that has, um, uh, what, can I, what can I call it? Uh, uh, whatever that's called. It's, it's uh, endorsement slightly, but um, I'm not paid for that. And um, I wouldn't be reviewing this if I didn't like it, first of all. And secondly, all my thoughts are 100% legit. Uh, I have nothing to gain from, uh, from that whatsoever. And, uh, you know, I buy two brewers myself with my own money. And um, my club loves uh, two brewers as well. Uh, we had, uh, boy, I think, I think they really liked the two brewers release we had last, uh, last year, uh, which was chosen as um, their, uh, their favorite international whiskey, I believe. So pretty fantastic. Let's get on to the special cask release number one. The Alberta Scotch Society release, KWM release. Uh, that bottle I bought all at KWM, by the way. The price was, what was it? Like one, I don't know, 130, 140, 150? I can't remember exactly. Uh, okay, so the nose. Really beefy peat. But also we've got heavy cask char here, I believe. And um, here is some information about the cask. The first release of a two brewers, 100% peated malt whiskey from a single use new barrel, exclusive and unadulterated from our cask to your glass. Yes, I believe we have. I just bought a pile of Maker's Mark, um, their um, uh, special releases, whatever they're called. And uh, are those Maker's Mark casks? Hmm. So on the nose, I'm getting billows of uh, smoky wood smoke. I am also getting uh, wood smoke from uh, from the cask. I'm getting some intense caramel and um, uh, burnt caramel. Darkly toasted uh, barley like a chocolate malt. A bit of um, intense chocolate, like 80% uh, cocoa. But it's bittersweet. So it's interesting. It's got a sweet edge on the one hand, but it also has a highly fragrant, um, yet lacking in sweetness edge to it in there. This would totally stand up in uh, uh, a uh, lineup of Isla single malt scotch whiskeys. Perhaps it's a little bit more like a Longro or uh, Ardmore. Hmm. 
this chocolate is kind of like a chocolate liqueur. And it's really intense and it's really enjoyable. Good choice. Well done to uh, Alberta Scotch Society. Okay, onto the palate. Cheers. The reason I'm saying this um, Maker's Mark is because I feel like I'm getting the um, uh, the the French oak staves along with um, some of their other specialty staves. Could it be that they captured one of those um, really unique barrels that Maker's Mark makes just for that program? Hmm. A rich chocolatey pound cake with a caramel drizzle. And um, it's almost like the peat is, it's, it's, uh, it's working together, but separately. So it's not quite And I'm not saying this is bad, but it's not quite like a like a peated sweetness, but it's like I've got this sweet, rich chocolate pound cake over here. And then I've got this interesting um, like ultra smoked beef jerky. Hmm. The finish is intense, peaty, um, dry, tingly, chocolate, intensely flavored, super long. There's this tea that my wife really likes. It's a, uh, it's a chocolate black tea with actual like cocoa cacao nibs in there. Oh, sorry. I think a fruit fly went up my nose. Hope not. <laughs> so this is a, a recurrent a recurring theme here this this chocolate chocolate tea. There's some intense Bowmore Tempest Tempest releases that are somewhat of this um, uh, ilk, but there's just way more sweetness there. So what's the story with this cask? They particularly avoided the, the wording of a virgin oak cask and they specifically wrote a single use new barrel well new barrel I guess that that tells you right there so it's a new barrel single use single use new barrel the wording is eluding me here obviously they mean this was the single use so in that case Boy, would would Maker's Mark sell one of those barrels before they're used? I don't think so. Um, but perhaps you know, an adept cooperage could uh, could create the same style with with some heavily toasted staves, 
with some heavily charred staves with maybe some French oak staves. It's really beautiful and I think uh, I think this this will be a nice direction for two brewers when they have reached a point where um, they are supremely well known not only in Canada but abroad for people that are traveling to Canada. For example, Glenn Breton has um, quite the um, brand awareness uh, from Glenora Distillery in um, uh, New Brunswick, pardon me, Nova Scotia. Um, but uh, two brewers, the news is mainly Canadian. The word is getting out a little bit, but uh, at the point in which it does, then their cask program um, should take off in uh, an exponential way, I think. And if you're someone who's considering uh, getting something of a like a world single malt um, as a single cask for your club, for your personal use, for your clients, etc., and uh, you end up in Canada often, you might want to inquire about that. I think that could be a really interesting, unique exploration for your club or for your clients. Hmm. Now I didn't tell you the ABV yet. 58% ABV. It drinks, it drinks strong, but it's got enough sweetness and age that um, you can enjoy it right as it is, right from the bottle. But I do want to try it with some water. We're going to add about three milliliters. Now, I just recorded a um, an epic cheap scotch taste test part two, which hopefully will be the previous review but depending on the editing time uh, it might actually appear after this so uh, either which way please check it out um, I've, I checked out um, uh, five bottom shelf very basic scotch whiskies that are hard to get in uh, North American and European markets um, like uh, black and white for example so do check that out and uh, I was really blown away by uh, uh, Ballantyne's 12-year-old. Pretty fabulous blend. And I think uh, if you can get that, give it a try, okay? Okay, let's get back into the special cask number one for Alberta Scotch Society with water from two brewers. Whoa. Now that was interesting. So with water... I got a rush of iodine right then and there. A very medicinal blast coming out of the glass here. And I know one guy who would absolutely love this, and that's Bart from Scotch Test Dummies. Hey, Bart. I think Scott would too, though. Hi, Scott. See, and then it tempers down a little bit. So it's like you got to let it sit for a minute and uh, let the, the vapors kind of reach the height. And then... Poof, beautiful. So a bit, a bit of medicinal peat in there. Hmm. Now we got some candy coming through. I love this cask. Whatever it is, it's fantastic. And uh, I'll probably be told the exact age of this 
bottling um, at some point. But if I had to guess, I'd say, hmm, celebrating the 10th anniversary. So, I mean, so then is it, is it, Alberta Scotch Society 10th anniversary. Well, that right there tells me it's got to be 10 years old. I would guess. Could be could be less, could be 9. It does well with water. Not much of a change. Just a tad juicier. That's about it. I want to try one more similar amount added. See, now we are simmering down that uh, that peat into something a little bit more um, roasted and uh, barbecued. I still get that occasional waft of iodine here. Hmm. To use today's lingo, so good, so good. <laughs> really interesting, having been away from Canada, from North America for so long, I experienced uh, stagnation. My, my language didn't keep up with the current language in certain ways and so I really noticed the difference and I really noticed the difference in vernacular um, like for example non-chill filtered no added color is the best 100% <laughs> meaning you're correct meaning I think so too <laughs> So that's that's new for me. Uh, what else is new for me? So someone tastes this blind. Oh yeah, that's nice scotch. Hey put hey bud. It's Canadian whiskey. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? <clears throat> oh, there's all kinds of things. Anyway, let's get back into this. Slightly ramped up astringency. I've got the chocolate liqueur working in there, but it's really unsweetened liqueur. Dark chocolate cherry heading out the finish. I think cherry is another big flavor that people like to see uh, in their whiskey. So chocolate cherry. Um, we got this peat all the way through this event. Um, now it's not, again, it's not like Laphroaig or Ardbeg, it's more like Longro or, uh, or Ardmore, um, or, um, uh, Old, Old Ballantruin, or, uh, uh, the Ben Riek, Peated Ben Riek, uh, Peated Edger Dower, you get the idea, I think. 
more savory, more earthy, a little bit less medicinal. This is medicinal, but not quite as much as an Isla. Again, a stunning, flawless release. And I've been thinking about this in my mind as I'm tasting this. This is my second time tasting it. It's got enough oxidation from the amount of liquid in this bottle. So uh, that's about the equivalent of, of getting down about halfway through your bottle. There's really, again, it's flawless. It's delicious. It's got everything you want. It's got age. It's got a single cask. It's cask strength, unchill filtered. No added color, no age statement, but um, they'll tell you if you ask. And I'm pretty sure, again, I'm pretty sure that's going to be 10 years old. It makes sense being the Alberta Scotch Society 10-year anniversary. Um, I, I could be wrong, so correct me if I am. But, um, you know, the color, the flavor, the um, uh, interesting... It's not just sweet, and I don't get that that harsh, new uh young flavor, which I would if it were much under six or seven years old. So that's just my thought. All right, on to the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Two Brewers Special Cask Release 1 for Alberta Scotch Society. Hi, Dolph and, uh, and Kent. And uh, what is, oh, and Andrew, I think I already said hello. What is that going to be, folks? It's going to be 94 out of 100. 94. Wait, what? 94. 94 out of 100 for two brewers. Private release, special cask release number one. Well done. Oh, my God. This is just gorgeous. Uh, absolutely deserves a huge malt hug. Mm. So does this one actually, mm, and kisses, one here, and uh, a double kiss here, uh, French style, mm, mm, beautiful. Uh, I'm duly impressed. I'm just thrilled. Oh, check out the the Cacao Talk open chat, whiskey whistle and friends. Okay, you can spell that phonetically in Korean. Uh, whiskey Whistle and Purenge or Whiskey Whistle and Friends in English. Okay, you'll find it. Take care, folks. We'll see you for the next one. Don't forget to subscribe, hit like, thumbs up, leave a comment. Check me out on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Whiskey Whistle. Goodbye now.